When the pH is 7, then it's a case where the sample is neither acids nor base. But less than 7, it's an acid, we say. More than 7, it's a base all the way. Welcome back. In the last video, we talked about indicators. We kind of defined the indicators, talked about what they are and what they get used for in terms of if they get used to classify bases or acids. In this video, we're going to cover some of the general uses in everyday life of indicators, and we're also going to describe them as well. So the dot point itself says identify and describe some everyday uses of indicators, including the testing of soil, acidity, basicity. Right? So we have to identify and describe some everyday uses, and we have to definitely cover the example of testing soils for acidity and basicity. So we're going to cover four examples, two in great detail and two just quickly mentioning them. The first one is we use indicators to test the pH of swimming pools. Now why do we test the pH of swimming pools? Well, why is because we use sodium hypochloride, which is this NaCl, NaOCl, this is sodium hypochloride right here, that one. And we use that to kill bacteria. So we obviously want to make sure our swimming pools are more or less bacteria free and we use the sodium hypochloride to, to do that. Now the problem is when we have this sodium hypochloride, which is this here, and we add that to water, which we would when we have it in a swimming pool, what happens is it actually dissociates, it becomes different things. So the Na becomes an Na ion, sodium ion, that's not the pro main problem. We also have this hydrogen um, hypochloride forming which is still not the main problem. The main problem is this here, because we also have these hydroxide forms. So these hydroxide ions form when we put sodium hypochloride in water. And remember what these hydroxide ions do? They, they increase pH, so they make something more acidic. So they increase pH. So when we're trying to kill these bacteria by putting this sodium hypochloride into water, that will make it more Say more that will increase the pH, so it'll make it more basic. It does so because we have as soon as this hits water, as soon as sodium uh, sodium hypochlorite hits water, it will dissociate and release these hydroxide ions, which will increase the pH, and make it more basic. Now the problem is that the basic um, solution in terms of water will actually cause our eyes to irritate, so it'll be not good for our eyes. That's why sometimes you, if you swim in the pool and you had used a lot of this sodium hypochloride, you get these burns in your eyes, irritation of your eyes. But so how do we solve the problem? How do we make sure that doesn't happen? Well, if we use dilute hydrochloric acid, dilute hydrochloric acid, and we add that to the actual water itself, that will neutralize our, our hydroxide. Remember, if we have too much base, we can just add an acid, and the acids and base together, they cause neutralization, which means we, we lower our pH back to normal levels. So if we have too much of a base, we can add acid and thereby it's neutralized. Now, the problem if we have too low pH is it will actually attack the metal of the pool, which means the pool itself will just fall apart after a while. So we want to make sure we don't have too low pH in our actual swimming pool. So, if for example, we add, were, to, were to add way too much hydrochloric acid by mistake to try to neutralize this, we would increase, decrease our pH by too far. And that would have a flip problem by it attacking the pool metal and thereby destroying the pool. If our pH is too high, then the problem is that it irritates our eyes and you get really painful eyes. So, again, that's one of the reasons why we want to make sure we have a pH around about 7 for the swimming pools. Too low or too high is a problem. So we feel, okay, we've said, okay, why do we test our pH? We test pH because the pH is increased because we use a sodium hypochloride to kill bacteria. What do we do to be able to combat it? Like if we know our pH is too high, we can use that hydrochloric acid to neutralize it. But the problem is, how do we figure out if our pH is too high or too low? Well, what we can use is we can use one of these indicators. So we use an indicator. In this case, we use phenol red. Now, phenol red has some different properties. If the pH were to be too low, so for example, if the pH is below 6.8, this would be considered too low, that phenol red turns yellow. So it turns yellow, turns yellow if it's too low. On the flip side, if it's too high, this phenol red will turn red-purple. So if it's 
too high, it will turn red purple. Whereas if it's just right, so if it has a perfect pH, which is in between 6.8 and 8.4, it's usually a pH of about 7, the actual phenol red is going to be pink and orange. So if we go, if we have phenol red, these indicators, and we put it into a swimming pool, if it stays pink orangey, that's good. If it turns yellow, that means our pH is too low, and we have to add more base to neutralize it. If it turns red purple, that means it's too basic, and we have to add more acid to neutralize it. But using this phenol red, we can actually figure out if, if there is a problem or not. Now, the second example, everyday example, was the testing of pH of our soil. Now, why do we test? So what's the reason? Why do we test our pH of the soil? The reason is because different plants need different pHs to grow. So different plants need different pHs to grow. So for example, the example I gave is apples. So this the pH of, of apples, the soil of the pH for apples, if you want to have optimum growth, should be around about 5.8 to 6.8. For and if someone's doing biology, they might remember the enzyme activity. All organisms have enzymes, and each organism might have a different range for which these enzymes work best at. And it just happens that for apple trees, we want to make sure that these enzymes have a pH around about 5 point eight to six point eight to grow properly and to do their job. And if it's too far low, too low or too high, then there won't be optimum growth. So we want to make sure we keep our soils for these different plants. So if we have apples it might be five point eight to six point eight. If it's bananas it's different. So for every different plant we grow we want to make sure we have the ideal pH. Because yes yeah, some need a slightly basic soil, whereas others need a slightly thick soil. And what we actually do is we grab one of these testing kits. So this is a soil soil testing kit. And they use a range of indicators to make sure that we can have that fine, you know, because it's often between a couple of points, so 5.8, 6.8, it's usually quite narrow, soil testing kit. So these soil testing kits have different indicators to make sure we have a very fine balance, like we can get very fine measurements. And what you do, you have soil, which is here. We could put your soil in here. So just collect soil and put it in there. And then observe the actual color change. So if it's too green, that means you know, it's a certain pH of 7 in this case. And if it turns a reddish color, that means it has a pH of 4.8. Different soil testing kits have a different kind of pH scales. But yeah, just the idea is you collect your soil. Once you've collected your soil, you check out the, the size of it and see, okay, whatever color turn means it has a pH of this and this. And if it's too basic, you can add more acid to increase the pH, uh, decrease the pH. And if it's too acidic, you can add more base to increase the pH. So once you figure out if there's a problem, you can take that information and think of a solution. But yeah, these testing kits allow you to first figure out what the actual pH is of your soils you're testing. Now the other, these were the two main parts that I've described. The other ones were the testing, so this is a third one, testing pH of industrial sewage. Now the reason why you do this, if you have industry, you can you often use lots of bases and acids to make different products. And the problem is the sewage will go into the water supply. And if the sewage you remove is too acidic or too basic, that could kill life in the ocean. So before you actually remove your industrial sewage, you're going to have to test your pH. And you don't want to put anything which is too acidic or basic into water. So if it has a really high pH, if it's too basic, you would add more acid to it before you remove it to make it more neutral again. If it's too acidic, you would add more base to it to make it neutral again. So you want to make sure you, you, your sewage is neutral and not too acidic or basic. So you test your pH to make sure that it's all good. And another place we often use it is obviously in laboratories. So for example, you're going to do titration soon. And for titrations, you're going to have to use your pH indicators to figure out if something has changed from a base to an acid. And generally, we use indicators in our labs, both for school labs and for science labs quite a bit as well. So I'll go over the dot points. Identify and describe some everyday uses. So what identify was just naming. So testing pH of a swimming pool, testing pH of soil, testing pH of industrial sewage, and laboratory testing. That was our identification part. And describe was the other part. So you know, why do we do it? Like what happens? The actual formula where you have sodium hypochloride releasing these hydroxide ions, and the hydroxide ions make it more basic. And then what kind of indicators we might use for phenol red? For the swimming pools, that's the description part. All right, so you should know all that for this dot point. But I hope this video was useful.
Thank you for watching.